Thank you for joining for today's Coffee Break webinar. Today's topic is a model of human brain development, measuring oscillatory waves in cortical organoids. The development of disorders such as autism and schizophrenia are thought to have their origins in the developing brain, but studying the development of the human brain is challenging. Scientists have up until now relied on animal models like mice and monkeys to provide insights into this process. Animal models, however, provide an imperfect representation of the human brain. The advent of induced pluripotent stem cell technology has provided a readily available source of human brain cells. These iPSC neurons can be grown in a dish and have the benefit of expressing human proteins such as ion channels and neural receptors with the potential to reflect genetic diversity. However, it's yet to be demonstrated that these lab-grown human neurons can recreate the complex neural networks found in the human brain. In this webinar, Professor Alison Mwathri, director of the Stem Cell Program at UC San Diego, demonstrates that the spontaneous development of neural networks in neural organoids, commonly referred to as mini-brains, resembles those found in early human brain formation. The research findings covered in this webinar were published last week in the journal Cell Stem Cell and has received widespread interest, being featured in numerous media outlets including the New York Times and NPR. Thank you for the introduction, Melissa. Hello, this is Alison Watri, and I'm a professor here at University of California in San Diego. I'm a faculty in the pediatrics department, also cellular molecular medicine. I'm also the director of the stem cell program here at UC San Diego. And I'll be talking about applications of uh, brain model technology. I'll be focusing on our latest work using brain organoids as a model for neurological conditions. The main motivation for this research is really to create a model uh, to interrogate the electrophysiology of uh, human developing brains. Uh, the human brain is really a black box, especially at these very early stages of neurodevelopment. So the access uh, to the human developing brain neuterus, um, it's virtually impossible, uh, would not be ethical to really uh, study these early stages in a healthy human brain. So scientists have uh, heavily relied on animal models or, or post-mortem tissues um, to really try to understand how the brain is formed. Um, so, uh, and this is a critical uh, steps on brain development. Uh, that's exactly when the brain is wiring and um, alterations in these early stages might actually uh, compromise brain functioning for life. Uh, conditions like autism or psychiatric uh, disorders such as schizophrenia, uh, they all seem to have uh, origins at these very early stages. So understanding how the brain is wired at these very early stages is quite critical to understand how the brain works. Uh, brain organoids generated from induced pluripotent stem cells or iPSCs uh, have emerged as a scaled-down and three-dimensional model of the human brain, mimicking various developmental features at the cellular and molecular levels. And despite recent advances uh, in the understanding of the cellular diversity, there is no evidence that these organoids can actually form complex and functional neural networks uh, that might resemble early human brain formation. Um, so our research has been focusing on uh, trying to see if these brain organoids can actually mimic these very early stages of uh, uh, neural network formations. In uh, brain organoids, as any other models, they actually have their intrinsic limitations. Most of those neurons are immature neurons. The organoids are not vascularized. We don't have all cell types represented. We don't even know if we are growing them in the ideal culture conditions. So there are several questions uh, regarding these limitations, uh, which are fair questions. Uh, for, for example, are they um, a good model to show translatability? Is this translational? Um, so we are pushing this field to actually have a model where we can study uh, these brain organoids, not only at the molecular and cellular level, but also at the network dynamics. Um, so we, we ask if this technology can be disruptive on, on helping us uh, to really understand um, 
how the brain um, networks uh, mature over time. To further evaluate the cortical organoid functionality in a mesoscopic level, we perform weekly extracellular recordings of spontaneous electrical activity using multi-electrode arrays or MEA over the course of uh, 10 months. Uh, cortical organoids were plated uh, in wells of these MEA plates, each well containing a 64 low impedance uh, platinum microelectrodes uh, yielding a total of 512 channels. So we virtually generate activity maps as well as raster plots um, every week uh, so we could analyze how the electrical activity would evolve over time. Over the course of 10 months, uh, the cortical organoids exhibit uh, consistent increases in electrical activity. Uh, we can measure that uh, by channel, wise firing rate, uh, burst frequency, and synchrony, which indicates a continuously evolving neural network. Additionally, we, uh, the variability between the replicates over the 40 weeks of differentiation was uh, significantly lower compared to the IPS-derived neurons in monolayer 2D cultures, which was a big surprise to us. Uh, during the initial recordings, we noticed that our organoids display a very robust pattern of activity. Uh, switching between long periods of quiescent, where uh, the networks were visually silenced, um, and uh, with short bursts of spontaneous network synchronized spiking, or network events. These network events were periodic um, and infrequent early on in development, when they are about uh, two months, um, and they were uh, happening every 20 seconds and decay after the initial onset. When they reach about four months, um, we can see a, a second peak emerging um, after the initial network event, leading to the presence of what we call a nested, faster oscillatory pattern between 2 and 3 hertz. And they went up to six months in culture. Uh, so this is a robust, a fast, a nested oscillation. Uh, cannot be seen in a 3D neurosphere, for example. So it's not, it's not a matter of number of neurons in a 3D configuration. So it really only happens when you grow these organoids um, from single cells, letting the neurons to form uh, these um, network activities over time. So it seems to us that uh, as long as you let them do what they are supposed to do, uh, the genetic information codes for this kind of uh, network to, to happen. So we quantify this complexity um, using several measures, uh, both spatial and temporal correlations between network events, for example. Uh, and uh, the inter-event interval consistently increase over 10 months of differentiation from extremely regular latencies uh, at two months uh, to irregular at 10 months. Uh, so this indicates that the increasing variability between consecutive network uh, events uh, uh, just increase over time as we'd expect for a more complex networks. The spa spatial and temporal irregularity uh, at the short-term time scale uh, within events also increase with development, suggesting a breakdown of the deterministic population dynamics from the onset of the network events. This level of activity and this oscillatory behavior uh, was never seen in tissue culture. It's very unprecedented, especially for human iPS-derived neurons. Um, so we are um, uh, curious to see if these uh, complex uh, oscillatory network activity in these organoids can actually represent uh, the spontaneous developmental trajectory observed uh, in early human neurodevelopment. So while the network activity from cortical organoids uh, does not exhibit the full temporal complexity seen in adults, uh, the pattern of altering periods of quiescent, silent time and network synchronized events resemble uh, the electrophysiological signature present in preterm human infants, EEGs, um, or electroencephalograms. This is what we call the trace discontinue. Um, so quiescent periods punctuated by high amplitude oscillatory behavior lasting just a few seconds. 
So uh, these intervals of uh, uh, complete quiescent disappear as infants becomes of term and the EEG is dominated by continuous and low amplitude desynchronized activity in adult brains. So we thought that by uh, using preterms EEGs uh, would be a nice way to start to correlate our uh, own data with human neurodevelopment. I think it's important to mention that the biophysics of these scalp EEGs is dramatically different from extracellular field potential in the cortical organoids. Uh, mainly because of factors such as spatial filtering by the scalp uh, or the orientation of neuronal populations in relation to the recording electrode. So therefore, we have to select uh, features that are definitely comparable between the two systems. And that's how we uh, decided to uh, select only a few of them uh, to actually compare the cortical organoids and the preterm uh, neonate EEGs. By comparing specific timing features between cortical organoids and the preterm infants, uh, we found a range of correlations in the developmental trajectory of features with age, as well as similarities in development between the two data sets. So our regression model predicted organoid development time uh, very poorly before 25 weeks uh, and uh, with uh, high variability um, followed by a true age with higher fidelity after 25 weeks. And the reason is that we could not train the machine before 25 weeks. There's really um, no much um, data on uh, preterms EEGs on 25 weeks, um, earlier than 25 weeks. Um, so a subset of preterm EEG held out uh, during training and was used for further validation of the model. In addition, we use other controls such as mouse primary culture, IPS, monolayer cultures, and even human fetal brain uh, cultures. So it's only the brain organoids who shows this nice correlation after 25 weeks. So note that a significant positive correlation uh, was uh, only observed uh, in the organoid and held out EEG data sets. So while the developmental trajectory of the cortical organoids is definitely not identical and are more variable than what we see in the human fetal brain, the two populations share similarities in how their network's electrophysiological properties change over time, suggesting a genetically programmed developmental timelines that can be detected by a simple uh, machine learning algorithm. So, Future research uh, using this model, um, uh, my lab has been focusing on a recent uh, clinical trial for autism using CBD, cannabidiol, uh, where we are generating a clinical trial in vitro in parallel. So every subject in this clinical trial will have their brain organoids made and measured using the same technology. So what we are hoping is to see how CBD can change the electrical properties of these oscillatory waves in these brain organoids and uh, hoping to predict or inform the clinical data uh, uh, beforehand. So if that's true, would show the validity of this in vitro model to actually correlate um, at least partially some of the features observed in these brain organoids with the actual uh, subject. So we're really exciting um, and, and waiting for uh, this data to come. Uh, so we, we just started. Um, this is something to watch in the next uh, year or so. So the data really show spontaneous developmental uh, neural networks in brain organoids. And uh, using this uh, simple machine learning algorithm, we show that um, they do have something that seems uh, a genetically encoded biological program because the trajectory between the organoids and um, uh, the human preterm baby seems uh, very similar. So we detected this uh, delta high gamma phase amplitude coupling during this network uh, synchronous event, which is again, it's a hallmark of uh, interregional cortical communication. Uh, this is suggesting that probably what we are having in these organoids to have such a high level of activity and nested uh, oscillatory behavior is some kind of a microcircuitry is being formed um, as we let them mature. 
The organoidal electrophysiological signature mimics preterm neonatal brain, um, especially after 25 weeks post-conception. Um, we cannot train the machine uh, before that, just lack of data. Um, and potential use of these brain organoids to model neurodevelopmental and disease states are ongoing. Uh, as I mentioned, this uh, clinical trial is something that will really show validity on uh, translatability as one of uh, the key features that we think that these brain organoids might be useful um, in the future. I hope uh, this was useful. There is tons of uh, data in the manuscript. I invite you to read and comment, send me messages if you have any questions. Um, this work was uh, done by or leaded by three um, uh, 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 researchers uh, in my lab. Uh, this is uh, Kleber Trujillo, who is really a leader on this field now and has been pushing a lot uh, to get this model going. Uh, the Priscilla Negrais, another postdoc in the lab, uh, and a grad student in the Wojtek lab, uh, Richard Gao. Those three actually uh, did um, uh, the vast majority of uh, the groundbreak working that you see in this uh, manuscript. Um, so uh, my funding agencies is all NIMH and, and CERM. They heavily contribute to take this model, um, uh, to create a new model here. And I need to uh, further disclosure that I'm a co-founder of Tismo. This is a company that uses, is, is using this technology of uh, brain cortical organoids for drug screening for autism and other neurological conditions. And finally, uh, all the families and subjects that contribute to our research. If you want to learn about how to record from mini brains on Maestro MEA, visit axionbio.com slash mini dash brain for more details. And that is the conclusion for today's Coffee Break webinar. If you have any questions you would like to ask regarding the research presented, or if you are interested in presenting your own research with microelectrode array technology, please forward them to coffeebreak at axionbio.com. For questions submitted for Dr. Mwatri, he will be in touch with you shortly. Thank you for joining in on today's Coffee Break webinar, and we look forward to seeing you again.